Alright, so in my previous video, I got my robot to drive forward with a little bit of trouble there, but it did drive. It drove forward eventually, once I made sure that everything lined up right as far as the programming and which ports my motors were actually using. But then to stop it, I had to go and catch the thing and press the button because it was waiting for that button press before it would end the program. And that's a little obnoxious. If you're trying to get your robot to actually run some sort of course or go and pick something up, having to go and like catch it and press the button at just the right moment isn't very ideal. So let's talk about how we can use a wait command in Java. This isn't exactly the easiest thing to do, and it's definitely easier in some of the other languages. And this isn't necessarily the only way to do it, but it's a way to do it that works. So we're just going to make a new Java program. So I'm just going to go to next. And sure, I'll go ahead and start with a simple hello world as the base. And we'll call it, I don't know, run for time. Because it's going to run for a certain length of time. Alright, so we have our public class main here. You can see SRC. You can see our main here. So here's our main. We're in it currently. We've got our public static void main already in here with our string args. And we're ready to actually do stuff. So before I do that, keep in mind that we have to do some imports, right? First things first, I'm actually going to go ahead and add a comment in here because comments are a good practice and you should be using them. And it's going to be a multi-line comment, so there we go. And this extra part, when I pressed enter, it automatically added it for me. So if I go back here, so slash star star, oops, 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 slash star star, enter automatically adds the rest for me and I can enter my comments so this is gonna be a drive for period of time maybe before this puts Java with Leo's program for NXT maybe after this just a byline So, importing. So in case you've forgotten how to do this, import space laos.nxt and well we're going to need it to drive so obviously motor. Even though we're not doing the whole wait for the button thing the whole time, I still like to use it because I think it's good practice for it to sit there and for it to let you know it's ready to run the program and then you can press the button when you actually want it to run. So in that case, when you're putting the program on your robot, if you accidentally tell it to run from the start, you're not going to have your robot accidentally drive off the table or go before you're ready. So import laos.nxt, and we need the button as well. So there we go. Import motor, import button, and we're good. And now we can actually have it do something. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and keep this hello world command, but I'm going to just change it to... Robot is ready. Press to start. And that should work. So we'll have robot is ready on the top line and we should have press to start on the line below it because this adds a new line. And here we'll do that wait command, so button dot wait for any press, just like we've seen in the previous video. And as always, in the command with the semicolon. And now we can actually have it drive. So once again, I'm going to have another system out print. And I just want it to say program is running. And let's have the drive commands. So motor dot a dot forward. And this time I'll make sure that I pay attention to which port is plugged into. And motor dot b dot forward. 
parentheses, semicolon, right? So this is going to drive. And we could tell it to wait for any button press like we did before, but we've already done that. And anyways, chasing down the robot isn't exactly the most fun thing to do. So what if instead we could tell it to drive for a certain length of time? Well, luckily we can. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest thing to do. So you're probably going to need to pause and follow along with me or pause and copy what I write. So to do this, and the reason why it's kind of complex, when we talk about programming, and we specifically talk about programming in Java, Java uses something that we call threads. And so if you think about like a string, like just a string of thread, there's a start and there's an end, right? And if you're moving along this thread from the start to the end, that's kind of how the program works. You sort of have points along this, this string that have those commands for the program. Now, you're not limited to only one thread. You could have two threads side by side that have their own separate commands, and Java can run down both of them. And you can have more. You can have multiples in there. So that's how we look at a program running in Java is, is as a thread. And so right now, we have a single thread that is running during our program. Now granted, we have multiple commands in here, yes, but they are in order. Even though both these motors are running at the same time, and even though this is still showing, it's not like an ongoing active command. It has told the motor to start running, and the command is done, and it is running, and it's going to keep running until we tell it to stop, or until the program ends. So, even though you might think about these all running at the same time, it's still one thread because it's telling this to happen, and then this, and then this, and they're just still going until we tell them to stop. So what we have to do is we actually have to tell it to put this thread sort of on pause, or the way that we look at it is sleep. So we're going to tell the thread to sleep for a certain length of time. So the way we do that is try and I just press enter just just enter curly brace enter thread dot sleep and then in parentheses I can tell it a certain length of time so let's try 5000 and a semicolon now this will tell it to sleep but Java's not just happy with that because Java wants a a second option because this is saying try. So what happens if it fails? We need a fail option. Now that shouldn't happen, but Java doesn't care. Java wants it anyways. So we'll do that. So we call that a catch. So in case this doesn't work, the catch will run. So we're just going to create some new parentheses and we're going to do interrupted exception. So you can see that right here. And E and space. Now there's a lot more that we could explain about this, but let's just call that good for now. I don't think extra explanation at this point is going to make it clear. If anything, it'll make it more confusing. So essentially just know that this is what we have to do. We have to have a try and then we have to have a catch. And just like the try had stuff in it, so too does the catch. So we'll press enter, and we'll put another curly brace in there, and enter. And let's just put a system out print in there. So system out print line, and we'll just say sleep interrupted. Is that how you spell interrupted? That's not how you spell interrupted. How do you spell that? No, that's not right. Oh, yeah, and even that little underline there, if you can see it, that's even telling me that, hey, you misspelled that. And, like, Java doesn't care if I misspelled it because that's not a problem for it. But IntelliJ understands that maybe I want my spellings to be correct. So it's just underlining, just saying, like, hey, I don't recognize this word. You might want to change it. It won't make us change it. It's, it's our choice. All right, so we have the system.outprintLine. 
We have wait for any press, so it's letting us know it's ready. We have the moving forward. Oh, we don't want this wait. There we go. Get rid of that wait. So that way it's only on this delay here. And so it's going to do this for this long. Now, how long is that? So this might look like a lot of time, but it's really not that long. This is milliseconds. So essentially, 1,000 of those will be one second. So this is five seconds. Now, that is an approximation, but it should be close enough for our needs. Now, is that long enough? Maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on how long you want your robot to drive. And so after our sleep command, we need to do that. So I'll just enter a new line here. And we'll do, scroll down a little bit just to make this easier to see. We'll do motor.a.stop, parentheses, semicolon. That should be a lowercase s. And then motor.b.stop, parentheses, semicolon. And maybe let's do another print command. So we'll do program complete and let's add in another button wait for any press so that way we can actually see this message and then we'll confirm that we saw the message with a press of any button